Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey tea sippers, I hope you guys are doing good today. So it is a lot going on right now, especially concerning Diddy. So if you guys do not know, it seems like his day of reckoning is finally coming and people are backing up off of him, okay? Cause he's hot in these streets right now. So like I stated on my live stream um, the other day that I did, um, there were two more lawsuits that came out around Thanksgiving, okay? I was minding my business, prepping my Thanksgiving meal, and we were hit with two more lawsuits on top of the one that he settled with Cassie. So if you guys remember, a woman whose name is not being told to the public, her name is Jane Doe, she accused Combs of arring her alongside his friend Aaron Hall. And this took place in 1990 or 1991, and they just basically took it and were choking her. It was horrible. And then the very next day, a woman named Joy Dickerson Neal also accused Combs of drugging and arring her while she was a student at Syracuse University in 1991. And then he also shared it, which was a case of revenge porn before revenge porn was a thing. So the reason why a lot of this stuff is coming to light is because, like I've been telling y'all for a while, um, the Adult Survivors Act that New York State put in place not too long ago, they basically said that it was getting ready to expire. So if you had something to say, you better say it now or forever hold your peace. And when I tell you thousands of women came out the woodwork, not only, you know, against high profile people, but security guards, prison guards, even the mayor of New York. Eric Adams, this whole situation is a hot mess. I want y'all to go ahead and watch this video really quick. It was a stunning lawsuit against hip hop icon Sean Diddy Combs, triggering headlines earlier this month. Now to the allegations against Sean Diddy Combs, the rapper and music mogul is accused of sexual assault. His former girlfriend, R&B singer Cassie, demanding $30 million over allegations of rape, abuse, even sex trafficking. When the headlines came out about Diddy, just the amount of information and detail and allegations were, were jaw dropping to say the least. Cassie, Sean on the right. Sean, quick solo. But it was just one of an avalanche of lawsuits, many hitting high-profile men, thanks to New York State's groundbreaking sexual assault statute. Combs settling out of court the very next day. His legal team later saying in a statement to ABC News, Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Ms. Ventura the best. This is not an admission of guilt. This could just be the cost of doing business, that he wants to settle and move on even though these allegations are false or they're true. And he doesn't want to go through the discovery process and so it's better to settle and move on than to go through the loss, not only financially, but also in the court of public opinion. And as the deadline for New York's adult survivor's law was set to expire, Daddy, two other women suing Combs. Others suing actor Jamie Foxx, Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose, former New York governor Andrew Cuomo, and current New York City mayor Eric Adams, all accused of sexual abuse from incidents years prior. It's uh, absolutely not true. Uh, you know, I would, I, would, I would never do anything to harm uh, anyone. All the men denying the allegations against them in statements. Those new claims of old offenses only made possible by the New York Adult Survivors Act, signed by Governor Kathy Hochul last year, which expired at midnight, November 23rd, Thanksgiving. What Governor Hochul in New York State did was say, you know what? just for a year, this will be the middle ground, so to speak, to allow these claims to come forward, but not open the barn door, so to speak, to allow all claims to come in forever. The Adult Survivors Act opened a one-year window for victims of sexual abuse to file lawsuits in civil court against their abusers, regardless of when the alleged crimes took place. Survivors have one year to take action. It doesn't matter if it was your coach, your cab driver, 
your doctor. But the law had had further reach, bringing forth thousands of claims of abuse, exposing systemic malaise across society, from spas to airports to hospitals, even prisons. There are many people who were afraid to bring sexual harassment claims against their harassers because of the power dynamic that existed. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump's legal team claiming it made more than 1,700 filings against New York prisons. It is such an ordeal for them to finally come forward because they are so distrustful of the system. They think that they have no voice. They have no power. Crump represents Mia Wheeler, one of those alleged victims. I spoke with her last year. It is hard to make a positive turnaround when you are being subjected to sexual abuse. It plays on your mental, it takes your focus off of everything. Wheeler says she was in her 20s when she was sexually assaulted repeatedly by a prison guard in New York's Bedford Hills Correctional Facility. When he would walk past my cube if nobody was there and it was a meal time, he would come in and pe peek in and say, hey, you know what time it is. What did he mean by that? That it was time to have sex or time for me to perform a sex act on him. Tell me about how this affected you. Physically repulsed and turned off, but during the acts, just having to tune out. I just wanted it to be over. The only thing I knew is that as long as I come home, I can bury it. Get out of prison, get off of parole, and go on with your life. That's it. Now, almost 20 years after leaving prison, Wheeler is waiting to have her day in court. Wheeler is among at least 900 formerly incarcerated people who came forward, saying they were allegedly sexually abused in state prisons. <sighs> see, see, you never really know the anger that can build up, the feeling of not being in control, the feeling of feeling less than, holding a dark secret and not being able to tell anybody. It's one my life. U.S. federal law and nearly all states, including New York, criminalize any sexual relations between staff and inmates. In a statement to ABC News, the New York Department of Corrections and Community Supervision refused to comment on possible or pending litigation, but said in part, DOCS has zero tolerance for sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and unauthorized relationships. The department thoroughly investigates all reports of sexual victimization, including unauthorized relationships and retaliation against individuals who report incidents or cooperate with those investigations. Wheeler is asking for $20 million in damages for the pain and suffering, injuries and expenses she sustained as a result of the alleged abuses. New York State requires a monetary claim for all damages. But beyond financial compensation, Wheeler says that sharing her story has been part of her path to healing. I could not continue to be an incomplete woman, a broken person, a hurt soul because her people hurt people. At least 3,700 lawsuits were filed in the year the New York Adult Survivors Act was active. There are calls for the law to be extended or made permanent, but that requires new legislation from the state chamber. Hopefully, this law has taught society a lesson. Anytime we can give victims a voice, it is a good thing for society but we feel that there are thousands that were left behind. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So it is getting real. So now on top of that, today it was announced that Revolt TV is basically backing away from Diddy and he is stepping down from Revolt. Y'all know Revolt, you know, the same place that he was able to get Carisha a job. You know, he got her a job at Revolt. You know, he got the Breakfast Club on Revolt TV and everything else. So now they're saying that this is a temporary move and that he's willing to, you know, step down in the wake of all these allegations. And so what was so crazy is that is that basically Revolt took to social media and they said this. Diddy steps down as chairman of Revolt. 
Sean Combs has stepped down from his position as chairman of Revolt. While Mr. Combs have previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, the decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of all black people throughout this country and the African diaspora. Our focus has always been one that reflects our commitment to the collective journey of revolt, one that is not driven by any individual, but by the shared efforts and values of our entire team on behalf of advancing, elevating, and championing our, cult and championing our culture that continues. So that is what revolt had to say. And to me, that's nothing but a bunch of mush mouth bullshit, okay? Because there's been so much said about Diddy over the years, but okay, revolt, go off, okay? Clearly the chickens are coming home to roost and they're not done yet because later on today, if you guys remember seven years ago, a school in Harlem, it was a charter school. And so um, he was very proud of this. They even moved into a bigger building in 2021. Well, now today it's been announced that Diddy's partnership with the charter preparatory school has ended amid the sexual assault allegations. So when it rains, it pours, and I don't feel bad for him at all. So this is what's being said. Following a comprehensive evaluation, a decision has been made to end the partnership between Capital Preparatory Schools and Sean Combs. While the decision was not made lightly, we firmly believe it is the best interest of our organization, health and future. Dr. Steve Perry, founder and the head of schools, Capital Preparatory Schools. And we all know who Dr. Steve Perry is, honey. He's still fine after all these years, okay? So they are backing up off of Diddy. A lot of people are backing up off of Diddy. And again, it's very interesting how now everybody wants to wash their hands of him because of these allegations. Because these allegations have been floating around the industry for years. Diddy's character has been shady for years, but it's funny that now everybody cares. Now everybody's, you know, oh, we got to distance ourselves. When this man has been taken from people, like I told y'all a while back when he tried to say, oh, I'm giving back everybody's publishing, I told y'all that was bullshit. That man was giving back publishing because he knew some stuff was about to hit the pipeline and he didn't want all these people telling on him, saying anything bad. That is why he tied the publishing to an NDA, okay? So now, if that's not crazy enough, of course, 50 Cent had something to say. So let's go ahead and read what good old 50 had to say about the situation. 50 Cent says, look, I'll buy that from you, playboy, for the low, because you know Cadillac and AT&T gonna pull out. I'll give you a few dollars for it now, sell it to me, then we can be friends. I'm serious, call my phone. Y'all know 50 Cent has no chill. He has been having a field day with all this dirt that is coming out about Sean P. Diddy Combs, okay? And again, like I said, he's always been kind of creepy. Like, I see why the school is kind of backing up off of him because a lot of videos are coming back out. A lot of people are whispering. If you guys remember a few years ago, um, Jay Versace came out and said that Diddy had him, you know, on the trampoline with his face down, ass up. I don't know what the hell that was about. He's supposed to be over there, you know, hanging out with the kiddos. And he said his ass was in the air. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and check out this video. Diddy has been making the rounds with however many ladies as he can. Yet it hasn't halted the reports about his clashing sexuality. 25-year-old Jay Versace has quite recently added to the tales with claims that while visiting Diddy at his home months prior, the rapper bent him over on his monster outside bed, guaranteeing that Jay's vague remarks affirms Diddy's secret gay exercises. Jay Versace is an American social media personality who is known for his comedic content and as being the funniest teenager on the internet. When he was at the peak of his fame, Diddy invited him over to his Los Angeles mansion for a party. A gathering of some female TikTokers posted a throwback pic showing them playing on Diddy's outdoor bed. That's when Jay crept into the comments and made a few touchy charges towards Diddy, revealing Diddy had him bent over on the bed. Jay did not explain the circumstances around him being folded over with Diddy. All right, so y'all just saw that video, and let's not talk about the creepy videos where he's basically jocking Quincy. Um, I'm re I remember we posted a video a few years ago of him playing in Quincy's hair and saying that Quincy had good hair, but y'all know that Instagram page is gone, so I can't find that receipt. I'll have to find that at another date. But I don't blame the school for kind of backing up off of him because, again, we definitely don't want the babies being harmed by P. Diddy or anybody else. 
just looking at my beautiful son. Boy, you's a, you's a beautiful <laughs> black king. Thank Jesus, you, you just Thank you, God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> man, Thank you. man, man. I appreciate you. Man. I bless, love you, thank you. I mean, what you doing, man? You're getting, what, what's going on, man? I'm growing up, Pop. You're, You're growing, growing up. up. You're growing up. You know, and again, this is karma. For years, this man has been living recklessly. He's been arrogant. He thought he was untouchable. And he's finding out that fat meat is greasy. And I feel absolutely no ways, okay? So now in other news, let's go ahead and talk about this situation. So if you guys do not know, Blueface's mama is out here wilding out once again looking for attention. So the other day, she basically announced to the world, you know, nobody, nobody at all, that she was going to launch her OnlyFans on Blue Tooth, a.k.a. Blueface's birthday, okay? And so basically her kids were kind of coming at her like, Mom, you know, you're wilding out. You're on some whole shit. You're always looking for attention. So this is what her daughter said. Great idea, mom. I've been contemplating OnlyFans for a while now. Now that I know you support the movement, let me join too. Mother, daughter, OnlyFans duo or what? Then she says, you're not only embarrassing your son, Jonathan, but your other two kids as well. If you wouldn't want me out there, why would I want to hear about you being out there? Then her other son says this. My mama get on my nerves. My, with quotations, mom, would never thumbs down i'm the worst way so that is what two of her kids said and right now blueface is basically just ignoring her blueface is tired of her antics so because you know she's not getting the attention that she's seeking she's taking the social media to go off on her children y'all go ahead and check this out they not understanding that so that as they mama i've got to go back and talk to them with the language they understand okay now, you want to call me a hoe, get ready for this motherfucking gray hairs, hemorrhoids, and this pink and brown shit that's about to go down. And your homeboys talking about, that's your mama ass? Yep, that's his mama ass. Yeah, he said his mama a hoe. Let me, she going to show you how the best hoe work. Yes, that's his mama ass. So every time them motherfuckers step outside, go to the club, the grocery store, I hope they put this motherfucking hemorrhoid on the goddamn billboard out this bitch. You hear me? You motherfuckers better put this ass on candy motherfucking camera. So when them motherfuckers get 50 years old in church, they remember that they called their mother a whore. All right, y'all just heard Carlisa. I don't know what's wrong with this lady, but her attention seeking absolutely knows no bounds. You know, she's so busy trying to spite her children as if she's not the adult in the situation. And what she doesn't understand is regardless if her children like what she does or not, she also has grandchildren. And that's what I'm not understanding. Why is she not thinking about the grandchildren being teased and made fun of because their grandmother's hemorrhoid infested ass is sitting on OnlyFans trying to get a check? You know, it's like she's a bigger attention seeker than Krishan at this point with all her antics and the stuff that she's trying to do. I just think it's sad. It's really sad that she's doing this, thinking that it's cool and she's trying to spite her kids. But at the end of the day, she's making herself look crazy. So anyways, in other news, OK, I have a few stories I want to hit on. Um, this story is just really, really disturbing. So if you guys don't know, Nardo Wick's fan was beat down severely. Like, this entire video is extremely disturbing. Um, so this is what's being reported. A spokesperson for the Tampa police tells us that they are asking the public to help identify the attackers, adding that the victim is in critical but stable condition. Anyone with information is asked to reach out to the Tampa police. A Nardo Wick fan got much more than he bargained for after asking for a photo with the rapper. As Nardo Wick's entourage unleashed a, unleashed a brutal attack, leaving the fan hospitalized and the incident under police investigation. Sources say that uh, he was leaving Sky Nightclub in Tampa when he spotted Nardo, leaving the venue around 115. That's where the video obtained by TMZ picks up. You see the fan approach Nardo and his team. From what we are told, he wanted a photo. And without warning, a member of Nardo's team sucker punched a young man, knocking his head into the concrete wall. Unable to move, the fan seemed stunned. That's when another member of his entourage punched the fan again, causing him to fall to the ground and hit his head on the pavement. 
The attack is cowardly and Nardo wearing the white shirt near the rear of the SUV appears to try to get his guys to relax, but his efforts are useless. So I'm not going to show the video because it's violent and YouTube censors every damn thing. But you guys can go watch the video. When I saw it, it sh I mean, my mouth dropped. It's so insane how these entourages think they can just do anything to anybody without consequences. The video is just extremely disturbing. Um, there's no excuse for that type of violence, especially towards somebody who is paying your way who is covering your bills. So you can sit here on social media and floss and front and everything else. This was a fan asking for a picture. If they had assumed that he was violent, who's gonna attack Nardo, then he wouldn't even been able to get that close. They could have pulled him to the side, they could have grabbed his shirt, but to just sucker punch him is insane. So his mother went off on social media. Oh, his mother went in. I'm gonna go ahead and read to y'all what the mother had to say. So the young boy's mom says, I want everybody to see what these motherfuckers did to my son. At no point was my son aggressive. At no fucking point did he show any sign of harm. My son wanted a stupid fucking picture with his favorite artist, and this is what he gets. I'm sick to my stomach to think about how this could have turned out. Please help me share this. Please, as a mother, I'm begging you to get justice for, for George Obgon jr anyone who knows my son knows he's the sweetest and gentlest kid ever no drugs alcohol gang nothing i'm dying here my fucking heart is hurting so bad i'm sick to my stomach i can't stay quiet that is a mother's pain that is a mother i don't care about her cursing and going off you know what i'm saying that is a mother who is upset that her son could have been killed people can die like that you know you getting hit in the side of your head on your temple at the right spot and hitting your head on the pavement, there have been people who have died like that. Remember Dr. Dre's brother, Tyree, he got into a fight and he hit his head on the pavement and he ended up dying. You know, so this is not just a simple assault, this is insane. So after this went viral, um, Nardo got tons of backlash. People were really mad at him. So this is what he had to say about the situation. He says, I don't condone what happened to my fan, George, after my show in any type of way. I expressed to him and his mama how sorry and concerned that I was that it happened to him multiple times before anything was ever posted on the internet. I sent his mama my number instantly that night it happened. I was even going to make a post to try and find out who he was before his mama texted me. I can't control another grown man's actions. I ain't know that was gonna happen. And I was mad when it happened. I tried to stop it as you can see in the video. And if somebody got the longer video, you can see how mad I was. I love and appreciate all my fans and don't condone what happened at all. That shit ain't gangster or cool in no type of way. So that is what Nardo Wick had to say. I am glad he is taking responsibility, you know, as far as like, yeah, he didn't condone it. He didn't say that. But again, like I always say, you have to watch who you surround yourself with because at the end of the day, just like with the baby, if you guys remember four years ago, the baby security, they had beat up, they had beat up Don Trag and he ended up in the hospital. His mom was on social media crying. I mean, it was insane. And he ended up getting sued for that. I mean, he was sued um, for that vicious attack. And the thing is, when you have things to lose, you have to surround yourself with people who genuinely want good for you, who genuinely want you to succeed. For Nardo Wicks's entourage and crew to just sucker punch somebody and to basically jump that young man because he wanted a picture is disgusting. And the crew, I hope they face criminal charges, but at the end of the day, Nardo, because that's your, you know, that's your crew and you're the star and you have the money, you will be held financially responsible, you know, for what your entourage does the same way the baby was. You know, he was sued for millions of dollars as he should have been. The whole situation is insane. I don't understand these degenerate crews who think that it's okay to just go around assaulting people simply because they want a picture. Well, now the mother and the best friend of George, they were speaking to TMZ and they did an interview about two hours ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that interview for you guys now. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Um, can you share any details like that? Um, I, it's correct, he's in, he's in stable conditions. Um, so, you know, um, still, still being monitored. Um, still uh, trying to see, you know, what, what will be the damages um, after right. everything is said and done. So, Connor, you were there that night, Sunday night, after the show. Had you both been 
inside did you go to Nardo's show? Yeah, so we actually both were VIP. We both had VIP tickets to go into the show. Mm. And if you look at the beginning of the video, that's me with the, the V shirt on right there. Okay. And I was I was just a few feet behind him when this happened and it was just I was stunned when everything went down. They were exiting the club and um, we were walking we were you could see I was walking towards Nardo too. We weren't it's not like we were running or anything. George was just walking towards Nardo with his um, with his phone up. Mm -hmm. And then the guys that were around him, they didn't hit him at first. They just kind of looked at him. And he was like, hey, can I get a picture? And then out of nowhere, the guy hit him from the side and just knocked him out. And then the guy, the other guy continuously hit him while he was knocked out. It's completely ridiculous because even, even if you don't want someone coming up taking a picture of your artist or your friend or whatever's going on to hit him and stun him is out of the question but right. to continuously hit him after he's on the wall leaning like not even responsive right it's just it's gonna never happen have you been able to to talk to george has he been alert have you been able to talk to him about what happened and um and what what is you know prognosis is going forward so yeah, I mean we we've, we've been talking to him and you know we we've been asking him questions about what happened, things like that. Um, not to go too much in detail. Right. Um, doesn't remember a lot. Um, so you know, um, just I have no words. I have no words to say about that video when I finally received it. All I know is. I, I don't want this to happen again. Okay. I want, I, I want to make sure my son is safe, my son is healthy. I want to make sure parents out there don't get that call at 1.47 a.m. like I did, that your son. I don't condone that situation that happened. I don't stand for that situation that happened. I was fully under what that situation was about to take place. Feel me, as soon as it happened, I tried to de-escalate the situation. And after the situation, I, I, I got in contact with his mama. I sent him my number. I called, asked how he was doing. I told her I'd do anything to make it up to him as a fan. You feel me? I, I told her to keep me updated on his health. And, and, and it ain't about trying to stop nothing from happening because I don't want to get sued. with nothing. It ain't none of that. You feel me? I, I genuinely care about the fan. That's all I'm worrying about right now. I don't give a damn about it. Like, wait, everybody talking about, talking about, sue, sue, sue. I don't care about that. They, they going to do what they got to do. They do what they do. You feel me? Right now, I'm worrying about the fan mates. He's straight. And I, you feel me? I just want him to know that I ain't condone that. I ain't want that to happen. That ain't how I treat my fans. I love my fans. You feel me? I don't rock like that at all. You feel me? I wasn't gangster. I wasn't cool. I didn't know that was going to happen. You feel me? I didn't expect that to happen. I love all my fans. I welcome all my fans with open arms. You feel me? After the situation happened, I was mad as hell. You feel me? I got in contact with his mama that same night. I checked on him, I asked, I told her anything he need, you feel me, I got on, you feel me. Before anything was posted, before any video was seen, before any blog posted, before she posted anything, then I reached out to her, I checked on him, you feel me, and told her I got, her, got, got him whatever he need me to do, you feel me, to make it up to him as a fan. And ain't nothing like that going to ever happen again, you feel me, I promise I make sure that if you're a fan, you can ask me for a picture. All right, so you guys just saw what his best friend and the mama had to say. So this entire situation is really unfortunate. And this is why, once again, hip-hop is dying. This is why a lot of people do not want to go to hip-hop concerts. It's always some bullshit, you know. And it's just really sad that these entourages continue to assault people on behalf of their artists when they don't realize that you're putting your artists at risk for financial liability. What if that young man was killed for simply asking for a picture? You know, so and the thing is, they paid for VIP tickets. So obviously they were super fans of his. You know, it's a good thing that Nardo was trying to, you know, break it up or whatever. But it shouldn't have happened in the first place. So he needs to really check who he has around him because it's clearly apparent that the people that he has around him don't have his best interests at heart at all. So now I want to go ahead and touch on this last story. So I want to do an update on the whole King situation. So after I did my video yesterday, 
on it. Um, basically, it came out that the people that he was arguing with initially who were joking on him were his own parents, T.I. and Tiny. So there was a longer footage that came out. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that footage right now. Uh, King, have, you, have you ever woke up with a roach on your face? Here. No, that's not the go. All right, then. Yeah, man, go. Or in your ear. I don't know what you're talking about. I got in the neighborhood with me that roach on my roach in your ear. Y'all want to go to the y'all want to go to the bando in my neighborhood? Do y'all want to go to the bando? Do y'all want to go to the bando? To make him look better, he said he know not true. Silver spoon, I ain't never ate with that day a day in my life. Hey, you did I have a truth. Look, we used to have to come to my grandma's house because I'm getting in the you fight. You act like a baby to go to your grandma's house. Every day. You used to hold your breath. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. I want to be in these gates. I want to be outside in the neighborhood. That's why I want to be over there. They don't understand that. I'm going to tell you the reason why he want to be over there. Y'all ready? Because he can suck and pacify over there. He was 12 years old. He was sucking and pacify. He was 12 years old. He didn't do that in the house. He cried like a baby. Hold his breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They try to say I was over there trying to suck a pacify. But they ain't gonna tell you everything like that. They, they, yeah, they trying to hide it. Ain't nobody hiding it. it. He capping. Oh, he he capping. Hey. He know I stand on business. He, he know that. Sir. Hey, no nigga ever pull my car hurt, ever in life. I stand on business. You, you drop me somewhere, I stand on business. You, got you drop me in reverse, your hood, man. I stand on business. Yeah. I've been stood on business. I've been sitting on business. You want to hide it for the world? I'm going to put it out there for them to see. I, I want to put up nowhere. You ain't had me put up nowhere. Like, I ain't. You ain't had me behind the mansion. I was outside doing what I wanted to do. Like, what? You was behind the mansion. You cried. No. I ain't got too much to drink. I ain't drunk too much. Drunk too much. Let's go. You get mad because we say the South ain't the suburbs. Then he want to talk about some other like this being sick. This being sick. No, I'm being real. You lying. You lying. You over here flagging. You're capping. 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 I know you do. I know you. What's wrong with y'all? Why y'all doing that to me? Y'all know me. You know I stand on business. You know I stand on business. Why you even letting somebody play with me like that? Why you letting somebody play with me like that? Why you letting him play with me like that? Why you letting him play with me like that? No, ain't no joking. Ain't no joking. What you mean? You are embarrassing yourself. You are embarrassing yourself. All right, so you guys just saw that footage. So, of course, Charleston White, who went in on King and Little Boosie's son, uh, I believe this was like a year ago, he was talking about them being disrespectful, smoking weed with T.I., you know, just them doing too much. So a lot of people wanted Charleston White to basically weigh in on this situation with King. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what Charleston White had to say about this. Go ahead and check this out. Is that what you want to do, boy? You want to dethrone the king? Yeah, 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 boy, for keep off saying, I'm talking about putting all kind of single four headlock. And yeah, yeah, make you say, Daddy, I tell you, I quit, Daddy, Daddy. Say it louder, nigga, in front of every walking back out to the field. And so, Daddy, I quit, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, he gonna kick you in your motherfucking ass. But he had he done it last year, when I, I, I made a request, Tip, get you whooped, the boy. Yeah, didn't nobody want him. Yeah, that wasn't that. You been over there with your uh uh you been over there with your white grandmama. That was, see see uh yeah that wasn't happen. You been over you the kid been over there with the white grandmama, tiny's mama. So you a little unruly little mulatto baby. Yeah, you unruly than a motherfucker boy. And you can't have no good luck, no blessings, nothing's gonna come good. Bro. <laughs> they grow his head with them pink lips on that motherfucking palest yellow skin. I'm telling you, nigga, you better settle down and listen to your daddy. You, you, when your mama got to you, you should be saying, yes, ma'am. Okay, mama, you right. 
You right, mom. I'm, I'm, yeah, no, nah, nigga, Tip wasn't supposed to come out the back, holler about, nigga, my history ain't no mystery. You done made your daddy pull his gangster car out way from the back. It sound like your daddy was way back there when he had to come way up here to confront you. Nigga, my history ain't no mystery. I stand on business. You ain't hit nobody. You ain't tow up nothing and nothing. You don't stand on the wall. Nigga just stand on bed and tear up shit. Shit get knocked over. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't do none of that. King. Kang. Kang. You didn't do none of that. Somebody tell Kang. When niggas stand on business, people get hurt. <laughs> Didn't nobody get hurt but you when your daddy hurt your feelings and put you in that restraint mood that they used to put us in in the boys' home. Going out at the Falcon game, em embarrassing the family. The this is the hat. Yeah, that Mr. King, little ugly. Oh, that boy got a big mouth on him. And he talk loud with them yellow, big old red yellow lips. Oh, yeah, that boy loud in the motherfucker. Oh. Uh, yeah, 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 he fucking with the Atlanta Falcons up there disrespecting them people, hollering about he's standing on business. Boy, if you don't sit your look, you bruised too easy to stand on business. Yeah, that little yellow motherfucker bruised too easy to stand on. Man, nigga, boy, everywhere he get touched, it turn red, purple, and blue. Man, please, that nigga, he can't stand on business that yellow? Hell no, nigga, please. All right, so you guys just saw that video, and you guys just heard what Charleston White had to say. And, you know, he feels like T.I. should have been, you know, keeping his foot on King's ass, basically. So now T.I. is speaking out. And this is what T.I. has to say about the situation. He says, fuck this Internet talking about the family tied like a knot. We are we got for life. I'm a ride to the heavens or to the depths of hell about my junior. And ain't nothing going to change that. Now tune in to the new episode of Goat Talk with me and my junior at Next King 10 out now on Complex. So looks like this may have been, you know, either a way for him to spin it and, you know, try and play it off because the family's embarrassed. Or this was a publicity stunt for this promotion of some Goat Talk show. So at this point, who knows? These celebrities are all full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the whole situation is insane. You guys watch my commentary on it. I definitely think the situation is a lot deeper. Um, even today, he's saying that if anybody wants to interview him, it's going to cost $10,000. Good luck with that, okay? I don't know anybody who's going to pay him $10,000 for an interview, but, you know, go off. So, you know, again, like I said, there's a lot of nuances to that situation, but, you know, T.I. and them did allow him to be disrespectful to other people, and when you allow your kids to not respect others, eventually they turn on you and they think it's okay to disrespect you as well. So the whole situation is unfortunate, but hopefully they'll be able to move on, get some counseling, and figure this out as a family. So with that being said, y'all, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on all of these stories. Let me know your thoughts on P. Diddy stepping down and him getting removed from the charter school. Let me know what you guys think about this entire situation concerning Blueface's mama, Carlisa. Once again, looking for attention. And then also, how do you guys feel about the situation concerning Nardo Wick and his entourage beating up a fan? And last but not least, do you agree with Charleston White's commentary concerning King Harris? I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Don't forget to share the video. And most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to this channel. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.